Right, for the next part of the tute, we're going to be re-implementing the solving of y equal to mx plus b, um, but we're going to be introducing some more formal ways of describing our model uh, using a framework on top of JAX and um, using more complicated optimizer. So we started, this, this, talk, this part of the talk is uh, less about JAX, but the things that have been built on JAX. You know, JAX is quite rightly never worried too much uh, about, you know, how do you define exactly neural networks or what are the sort of helpful ways of doing things. It's much more interested in the core of the problem. And so um, there are lots and lots of options. And so Cambrian explosion of frameworks on top of JAX at the moment. You know, I've done some stuff with uh, Flax and now Linen in the past. I'm a big fan of objects. I've used that for a lot of, a lot of, a lot of projects. But because um, I wanted to deal a little bit more with the, the functional side of things rather than an object oriented wrapper, I've decided to use Haiku for this one. Um, also because I had never used Haiku before and it's, it's actually pretty nice and fits in well with this. So let's just jump straight in. We're going to be not using a TPU this time. We'll just use the CPU device like last time. And um, we've got eight of them, even though we're not going to do any PMAP. It's just cut and paste from the last tube, basically. So um, we're going to just do an install of um, Haiku and Octax here. It won't take too long. And we'll start with the same thing we had before, just basically a linear, a linear data set. Um, this time we have to be a little bit more explicit about shapes. So we're actually going to have um, basically 128 values, but each of them uh, is only one value. So we're going to be much more explicit about things being scalars here. So we can draw that like we did last time. And the same actually with the, with the Y. We, we only have one X value per instance, and we only have one Y value per instance. So we're going to be dealing with this um, you know, outer dimension, which represents the, the uh, dimensionality of the features. Cool. So let's let's define our model with Haiku, and um, the linear model is um, pretty pretty simple. <laughs> it's y equals mx plus b. And we've only got one basically uh, one thing we're dealing with here. So it's literally just this linear model with one one feature, and that's it. That's our model, and that's going to give us an m and a b. That's all we really need. Now. The whole point of using something like Haiku though is that it can be a lot more complicated in terms of sequential models and convolutions and all sorts of bits and pieces activation functions that come from JAX but also from Haiku. So really we're not really illustrating Haiku too much here except that it's going to really nicely fit with the stuff we've done so far. So we're just going to stick with the Y because that's to be. So we've got this model function though but everything we've done so far isn't around the model functions around parameters. So what does Haiku give us? Well, it actually gives us uh, the ability to bridge between these two things, this definition of a more complicated model and what Jax wants to see, which is these parameters. And it does it again by transforms, just like um, Jax decides to do things. Uh, we're gonna transform this function into one that gives us two interesting things. Uh, one is it's gonna give us an init function and the init function is a way of sort of uh, running a, a one-off pass through the model to see what our parameters are. And it's also going to give us an applied version of this uh, model where given some parameters, we can actually run them through. Let's just have a look at them real quick. It's probably simplest. So we've got our model function. We're going to call this transformation from Haiku called transform. We also do this apply with our RNG. I'll come back in a little bit about what this means. But the main thing we're doing here with this transform is getting a new object. And this object has two things that are interesting, this init and this apply. So if I take a, a random um, initialization key, this is just a JAX thing, and I take a representative input, so what my X is going to be, I can call this init function, this init function that's this new thing that's been put on this model, with that key, because we want random parameters, and with a representative input, in terms of like, you know, what's potentially how things are going to be different, and we're going to get from that a set of parameters. Now this looks very much like what we were dealing with last time you know, in the parameters so far, but we were dealing, we were making that dictionary ourselves. We were saying, let's have this dictionary and have a, an M and a B, M and a B. Here now we've basically said, well, we're gonna define at a higher level what the model looks like. It's a pretty simple one, this linear. And then um, Haiku gives us this way of basically now running forward through it, um, some input and basically collecting up what the parameters look like. But this is the thing we've got now, we've got these parameters and this is gonna fit very nicely with the way we were talking about everything before because, um, it's, everything's going to operate in those parameters. The, the transform though did two things. It, it didn't just give us the, the init, it also gave us this method to actually run the parameters through. So we get another thing from this model, which is an apply method. And that apply takes the parameters and basically runs them through. So this is basically the, you know, the, getting the actual run going. So given the parameters that were initialized, and in this case, just again, this representative input, I'm just going to run something through it. So this is basically my X. And this is my, my parameters and I can apply that and I'll get um, 
a, a value. I, I don't know why this transpose is there. Let's let's get rid of that. It must be <laughs> that's bizarre. I can't place randomly place a transpose, and we see what happens. Okay, so that's cool. But so Haiku is very very simple in that sense, and that's exactly what we want from these sort of things. Define our model, and then transform it in such a way that we sort of run it and poke and prod it to get the things we need to do these optimization leaps, like parameters, diction. The other thing we're going to do is um, use a more complicated optimizer, and we're going to use Optax for that. So Optax again, in a very similar similar sort of way, uh, gives us this idea of, a, of an optimizer. In this case, we'll just use Adam with some learning rate. And we can initialize um, our optimizer using that set of parameters. So and remember, what the, what the parameters really do is they talk about the structure of the model. And so by doing this, we get this uh, optimizer state. Because in the last one, um, when we had that really simple um, that really simple gradient steps, gradient descent type step, there's no um, there's no state in that optimizer. But you know, a lot of modern optimizers will have state. And so we want to initialize this optimizer um, so that it has some state ready to go. And you can see it's the classic things we get from Adam that's to do with these little terms that it's going to keep around each of the parameters in the model. So, but again, the optimizer is just dealing with these parameters which came from, from Haiku. So very nicely uh, decoupled and all dealing with this idea of um, these dictionaries of parameters. So um, like, like before, we're going to have a, a loss function. And you know, this, is, this is pretty simple vanilla stuff. We've seen this a couple of times. Now we have a loss function with respect to parameters. This, what we had last time. Now our update is going to be a little bit different because we're going to start to use this optimizer. The first part is going to be the same. We're going to we're going to calculate the gradients um, using using what we did before, value and grad, and get a loss. But how we're going to do the update now is not directly using some sort of tree map. We're going to do it via this optimizer. So what we do basically is to say, um, given this optimizer that we have, we can uh, call an update on it to say, given its current state. Because it needs to be, it needs to be stateful. And it's got this idea about you know terms per parameter, and those gradients give me a set of um, basically updates to apply, and a new version of the optimizer state. And this you know again it's this classic thing we see in functional programming, isn't it? We got this. We pass the optimizer state, and we get a new optimizer state, and we sort of you know have to carry it around. Uh, after that, we can then just basically use this helper from Optax to apply those updates. So these all of these things, the gradients. The updates, the parameters, they all operate in, in in using these dictionaries. So there's this idea that the per parameter in the parameters, there's gradients, and what the optimizer has done is basically converted those parameters into something which are updates, and then Optax gives us a way to apply them. So we have the parameters and the updates, and we get a new set of parameters. So the the use of the optimizer was just basically in these two lines. Uh, you know, step the optimizer forward in terms of its state based on the gradients, and from that also get some updates which can be applied to the parameters. So this is um, basically exactly um, what we wanted to have from before. We have, again, this loop, which again, in that functional style, uh, passes some uh, arguments and gets new versions of those arguments. So in this case, we're not just passing the parameters, we're also passing the optimizer state so that we can update the parameters and the optimizer state, and in this case, get a loss back. And um, you know, this converges pretty quickly. So the main thing I wanted to get across here is that these frameworks um, can operate. Um, we're all building on top of JAX and this the way that Haiku um, builds things is um, very, very nicely fitted with all the things we talked about in terms so far with um, the, the pie tricks. So pretty simple stuff. In the next part, we're going to talk about um, a re-implementation of an idea um, called ensemble nets.